Welcome to this video, the master class of potting up bare root orchids. You would think it's pretty straightforward. And if everything goes well when you receive your bare root orchids, usually there really is nothing to it. But I appreciate the fact that you clicked on this video because most of the time we do have a lot to deal with when we receive new imports and they come bare root because of the reasons I hope to explain in this video. If on the point of editing, I feel as though I have forgotten some information that I would like to add, that will be in the description. So a heads up on that. Now, this orchid came to me in May of 2022 and we are at the end of September of the same year. It is a Cattleya Maxima. And I have to say that considering I received this orchid in May of 2022, it is the beginning of the grow season, so why on earth didn't I pot it up straight away? That is what I want to talk to you about today. That would be the theoretical part of our masterclass today. But then I'm going to do a little practical part as well as in potting this orchid up because it is time. New root tips tell us so and it is encouraging to see. Before we do that though, this is how I've been dealing with her watering needs for the past six months since I got her. A little bit of water at the base of the container, not touching the base of the orchid, just around to provide humidity. So when you receive your bare root orchid, I'm just gonna briefly touch upon why I didn't pot her up and link a video that goes into further detail in the description as well about bare root care, new imports care, etc. Despite already owning a Maxima and knowing their growing habits, and despite getting an orchid that had some viable roots, I was not gonna just rely on what I knew about the cat leah that I already have. I wanted to study and get to know this orchid a little bit better because even though she had the long roots down here, some of them were viable, she was in bark previously. It's very clear to see. When you get a new import in, look at what's going on around the roots. The health of the roots, of course, is very important, but more often than not, we will get dead roots when we get bare root imports. If we're lucky, we will get a growing root tip, etc. But what I was looking at is, well, she was in sphagnum moss. You want to assess the previous media. So there was also seedling bark. So everything here is organic media that points in that direction. And let's just say you're going to repot her and put her back into organic media. You could have done that straight away and not waited. However, how do you know how long she's going to take to grow new root tips? The orchid has only just arrived. And do you have enough humidity to have an orchid that doesn't have really healthy active roots in your media so as to discourage dehydration through the leaves any further? You need to make sure that you have these two factors in place. No matter the media, no matter the setup, if you get a bare root orchid in and she is not actively growing roots, even though some roots green up, you may risk not being able to keep her nice and hydrated through the leaves during a growing period, which can get very hot unless you can provide the adequate percentage of humidity to avoid any perspiration through the leaves, pretty much desiccating the orchid, removing energy from the structures, and then how is she going to get energy to produce roots? So, that is my reason why I do not pot up any bare root orchids straight away because in my climate I have very, very low humidity and this way I can keep a container with a little bit of water and protect the surrounding structures because of the high humidity surrounding the leaves. I have also cultured this orchid up until now in a wet dry cycle because of the media that I saw was on the old roots. She was not in a media that I use religiously for most of my orchids. So I kept her in a wet dry cycle. What the old roots she came with were accustomed to. Now for several reasons, these have since died and that is absolutely fine. It's kind of to be expected. There's a lot of stress for an orchid when not potted up, not mounted, and just having to bide her time like this 
for months on end. But it is the safest way to get an orchid acclimated, not increase the shock factor, let her be in a very, very bright, shady location. Even if you're in a very dry climate with low humidity, avoid any kind of massive airflow. So pretty much put your new bare root orchid into a bubble of protection where she can get what she needs in order to photosynthesize, but not according to what her genus can take if she were super duper healthy. And the same is if you were already to have growing root tips or new roots growing when you receive your bare root orchid, you can pot her up, but keep her in bright shade and don't stress her out with any direct sun according to the culture until she is fully rooted in. So finally, we have arrived in this situation and we are going to be potting her up today. Very, very sparingly, I used seaweed mixed with CalMag at 25 parts per million of seaweed and 25 parts per million of CalMag to support her for as long as I could via the roots that were viable when she arrived. That doesn't include this one but she did have viable roots. These were all alive. You can see at the base here, there's still some green left, but all the others here have since died, which is understandable because of course, I was then dealing with a wet dry cycle. And during the warmer months of the year, I could have possibly left her in water all the time, but I did not want to risk these new growths that are now almost to their full size. I didn't want the base to rot out. The wet dry cycle was the safest bet. Anyway, you see all this? Now we're going to pot her up. Anything I say from here on in, whether you're going to be potting your bare root orchid up into organic or inorganic media, everything I am suggesting today, with the exception of one thing, in organic media, you can place the orchid on the surface of your media and let the roots find their way down into the pot. What I'm doing with Lekka and self-watering is suspending the orchid above the media, which I will show you right now. If you would like to see that process, we will clean up the root system and then take it from there. Now you may say, can I leave some of the old roots on for anchoring? Absolutely you can, that is optional. In my setup today, I'm not going to, but I have done so in the past. For what I'm doing today, I'm not leaving dead roots on for anchoring. So as best as possible, I will be taking off what I can. If I leave something on, that is strategic because I don't want to be messing around with any root tips that are way too close to what I'll be trying to cut off. Hence risking chopping off something that shouldn't have gone. So if I leave anything behind, it's to protect whatever is already there and very, very close by. Now I'm giving the base a once over, just check if there's any lingering pests. There shouldn't be, but she was in a vicinity where some pests did a number on some of my other orchids. So check for pests, check for any sign of something happening that shouldn't be happening. And this is a classic example of the video I first put out about the new orchids where I said leave bark on. You don't want to be tearing any bark off that could affect healthy velamen. And my initial thought, I was going to leave that chunk of bark on and tell you why. And just now the cleaning up monster got the better of me and all I tried was to pick that piece of bark off. And you can see this root was still alive and I've ripped it and now it's just going to decline. So that is why you leave the bark on where it's not going to affect the health and rest of your orchid one iota. My setup is Lekka and self-watering. I like to grow in inorganic media. It's working well for my cattleyas to date and I will continue with that. 
If you're using bark, as I mentioned before, this step, you can pretty much skip it and the timestamps are in the description. But if you're using bark, you can place your orchid on top of the media, secure it with the wire. It must not be moving around and vulnerable to any root tips being abraded and they stop growing. Just secure it and then jump to the step of aftercare. So what I've got here is my little wire, my support, which I'm going to need. And I want to scoot it into the middle because if the root system is anything to go by with the one I have already, it is a pretty vigorous root system. And we have so many new growths. Hopefully all of them are going to put out some form of a root system. And we'll be revisiting this orchid in her pot next year because I may need to bump her up some. Right now it's a 15 centimeter pot. When dealing with inorganic media, I could go up to any pot size that I want, but I don't want it to look ridiculous. The inorganic media clearly is not going to break down, so my pot size is not determined by how big of a root system is she gonna grow, is she not gonna grow. My pot size is determined by a ratio that is appealing to the eye. If you're potting up in organic media, you may want to opt for a smaller pot, depending on the media you're going to use. It is a cattleya in organic media. It would probably prefer a wet dry cycle. However, based on your conditions, your climate, your humidity, you may want to opt for a medium sized bark with a little bit of sphagnum moss in there. Otherwise, you'll be watering yourself crazy when the warmer months of the year come. That's up to you. That is a schedule thing. That is a preference thing. Anyway, Lekka and self-watering is my jam. So, because I have a bigger pot, I am going to crock the bottom with large Lekka simply to consume and absorb some space in the pot. Just to be a little bit more conservative on my small Lekka fills up the pot nicely. Perfect. Now, the next step in this instance is to suspend the orchid above the media. The reason being, I want the roots to go down into the nice humid environment that I'm providing for the orchid and its roots, as opposed to these root tips trying to find their way down, traveling across Lekka which, if I turn my back, can get too dry and would desiccate root tips, and I cannot afford that happening. Right now, the orchid is going to get exactly the same culture as she had before in her snazzy tub here. With the added exception, though, the roots will eventually find media. So here's what we're going to do. All I'm looking at now is to position her from a height level See that I'm happy with that because I need to position my wire on the support before I actually put the orchid on. So I have an idea about height. Keeping an eye on all the root tips there. Let's get that wire in place. As discreetly as possible because when you're doing a suspension like this, you won't be risking any roots abrading the media at all but you don't want the orchid to be flopping around either. So get that on nice and secure. And I've opted for a smaller gauge wire because my structures are smaller as well. I don't have many, many fat structures to work with, so I'm gonna take the ones I have in the back, I'm not touching the little ones in the front here. This all looks a little awkward, I promise you, though this works. I've done it with many, many orchids before, and I've left her purposely lower in the pot because of the humidity that the Lekka now exudes and keeps evaporating more water. I will fill up the reservoir with plain RO water because clearly there are no roots going down into the media. When the roots have developed a certain length, I will then fill around with small lecker so that any new root growth will also easily find its way into the media. The focus is now on this root tip right here. And then we had a few in the back under these new growths right there. But that is the point of how to be able to get a bare root orchid rooted into a pot without abrading the root tips. 
she is also going to go back into her location where she lived in her snazzy Tupperware prior. I will not be changing her light source. This is about rooting her in without risking any damage to the current roots. And even though she's so low in the pot, like I said, if the roots work out, next year we can then easily lift her up if that is what we choose to do. My Leka will also now stay damp permanently. Now I'm not going to be risking the base rotting out because I don't have her resting on water per se. The humidity that is now coming from the Leka will do all the work for me and this is super safe for bare root orchids that are in this stage of new root growth. This may not be what you expected but trust me this works. Depending if you took advantage of the timestamps or not, let me tell you, if you're going to be potting up your bare root orchid in arc, you don't have to do the suspension thing, but you need to secure her to a support so none of the root tips get abraded. In the case of organic media aftercare, there's also a difference and something that you can do is to keep that media nice and damp. You want to encourage the roots to go down into the media. You can do that by flushing the outer perimeters of the plot ever so often so that that media will not go dry. Just like with any other media that is too dry, if there's not high enough humidity in the ambient air, even organic media can become a desiccating agent and we don't want our root tips to desiccate. Regular flushing and keeping the surface of organic media nice and damp will do the same trick as what I'm doing here now with the large leka and the water all the way in the reservoir and the microfiber wicking up water. The humidity down there matches what the orchid was accustomed to with the exception now the roots are free to grow and I don't have to worry about them touching the base of the Tupperware. I hope that this was helpful. It is easier to narrate master classes when I'm actually not physically doing something so I hope the demonstration was useful and clear and if not, please ask away in the comments. I will be happy to explain in greater detail where it's nice and quiet and it's just the two of us. So thank you so very much for your time. I appreciate you, I appreciate your support. Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition though that you please stay safe. Take care, bye.